Hi guys, following some discussion on the Facebook Reaper page, uh, I wanted to show a little bit about what you can actually do with the loudness extension in Reaper. The loudness extension uh, allows you to analyze items in your, in your project and it's just really useful. So in this case, I have a mix that I've been allowed to use. Uh, and I just wanted to show you how I use the loudness um, extension. So first thing I'll do is to render the file to um, to a new track. So choose render, and then here we have the file name. And the important thing is that I add the rendered item to new tracks and project. So I just press render file. So now I have the new item down here, which is now my master or pre-master. So I, of course, have to mute my mix here. Um, this one. So now I can play this one back. So first, let's make this a little bit, bit bigger. As you can see, there's plenty of headroom everywhere, but now I can use my extension, loudness, and I just, let's go first check out some options. So analyze selected items, I have selected one item, so that's ready to go. Measure true peak, yes. Analyze after normalizing, no, I don't want that. Clear list when analyzing, yes, that's okay. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and one thing, that's important is this bullet point here that navigating to maximum short term momentary creates time selection. That's really important and we will use that in just a second. So just let's say analyze selected items. Okay, so I have an integrated loudness of minus 19. Uh, I have a true peak of minus 3.8. The maximum short-term loudness is 16 point, minus 16.8, and maximum momentary is minus 15.9. Now, I follow the um, Ian Shepard sort of um, loudness range, so I'm not so interested in the integrated loudness, but I'm integrated in the maximum short-term loudness. So you just double-click this one, and this gives me a time selection where I have the maximum short-term loudness in my project. I will extend the time selection a little bit, and then we can uh, go to my, I'll add a limiter to the mix. I really, really, really like the, um, the one from TDR, Tokyo Dawn Labs. In this example, I shall only need um, the actual peak limiter and the meter. So this is what we have. I will set my output ceiling to minus one in both cases. Multiband and brick wall, that's all fine. We'll just leave this for now. This is not a sort of limiting tutorial, but um, I want this meter to show the uh, true peak maximum, and I also want this to make show the uh, LUFS short-term maximum. So, now I'll just play this selected part and it will loop. And I'll start increasing the drive here. So this is very much in line with what Ian Shepard sort of recommends. I have a true peak maximum of minus one, and my LUFF short term maximum is uh, minus 9.9. .9. I could probably go to minus nine if I wanted to. So I'm happy with this. I will just render this out. So go to render, and then loudness test two, and we'll still add the rendered items to new tracks and project.
So now I have the new rendered file. And this time there's a little less headroom. And we'll just go right to our loudness extension again. And say analyze selected items. Let's just check that we didn't have. So we'll uncheck this one. So we'll have still have the old measurements. Okay, so now I have a true peak of minus one as expected. I have a maximum short term loudness of minus 10. The other meters showed minus 9.9. .9. And my integrated uh, loudness is minus 12.3, which is above the minus 14 that uh, YouTube normalizes to. It's always better to be a little bit above what they normalize to rather than be below, so they had to increase the loudness or do nothing. But so I'm very happy with this. And if I want to go to again to the maximum short term uh, loudness, it's still the same place. I can increase the time selection. So now I can open the Melda production loudness meter. And I can try to play back the file I just created or the loudness. As you see, the Melda production loudness meter agrees with the maximum short-term loudness, and it still has minus one dB true peak. So everything fits with the uh, Reaper loudness uh, selection, but I actually got uh, it much faster using the Reaper productions uh, or the Reaper loudness extension. One more thing that we could just try to do is to go back to this time selection and then render. Uh, this file again, but then this time render it to an mp3 file uh, and use a low bit rate because this will show why we actually do this. Now when we see the finished render we will and we will try to analyze it again, we will see that the true peak is now is no longer minus one um, because actually applying this codec changes the peak of the um, of the file or especially the true peak so let's just select this one and go to extensions loudness analyze selected items so the mp3 file has the same well, not exactly the same integrated loudness as the wave file. It has a higher true peak, but it's still it's still not above zero dB. So everything should be good. And then the maximum short term loudness is also different now. So applying a codec to a wave file actually changes both true peak upwards and also the short the loudness measurements, uh, the LUFS measurements also changes. I don't think you can say anything about which direction they usually change to. But this is why we actually have this 1 dB of headroom. This is to allow these extra peaks coming from the codec conversions. So, that's all. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.